We've got a little bit of work to do, but I think we're getting there. <laughs> My first guest is an American rock and roll legend. He's a judge on American Idol, Wednesdays on Thursdays and Fridays and every other day, really, on most days on the Fox Network. Please welcome the great Steven Tyler, everybody. <laughs> You look wow. great. Thank you very much. You'd you know be surprised I... how expensive it costs to look this cheap. Well, I'm telling you, it looks fantastic. <laughs> you are. Uh, you know what I like about you? Not yeah. only do you look like a rock and roll legend, you smell Ooh, like yeah. a. You got that? Yeah, you got a. Oh, the low time. It's really. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. You got a lot going on there. Did the sound run to the end to you uh, about oh, now? Look at this button opened up. It was that yeah. horse's ass that walked by me. <laughs> Um, Did you see the flight I attendants on, on the way on I the way out? That. Yeah, marching up and down, flight attendants. That's mm. the way. We missed that. You should have some of that on American Idol. You know, I think I'll talk to the guys about it. What guys? The guys that run Idol. Who, is that still Simon Cowell? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Cowell was who I took his place of. Yeah, I know, but doesn't right, he, so like, isn't he backstage saying, say, God, say no, something God, no. mean, no, Stephen, say other something other mean. <laughs> Does he do that? Did you know him before that? Did you know him no. from the music bus? No, no, no. But I turned the show on once and I heard him be mean and I thought uh, it was based on he didn't like country and western and I thought, well, that's silly because music is a beautiful thing heard by the ears of them that hear it. It shouldn't be judged as I don't like this country and western thing. Right. And, and so I just, you know, um, is that a harmonica over there? Yeah, yeah. Don't even Ooh. talk to me about that, right, man. Because, okay. like... So well, here's the thing. You can win the Golden Harmonica on the show, but I kind of think I should just give you the Golden Harmonica. It's not like it's going to be, oh, is Stephen going to be able to play the harmonica? Is that like a Marine band, a real one that can be played? Well, it's a little one. We usually Sorry. do it at the end, but I don't know. Oh, no, no, we'll wait till the end. Let's get back to Simon Cowell. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So you get along with him then? I had not met him yet. But really? I, no, no, no. He's, he's been here on the show. Yeah. It doesn't smell nearly as good as you, no, I have no, to tell you. No. Yeah. Is, is he's got it. You know what he smells like? Tea. <laughs> oh, the tea bags. Yeah, yeah, a little bit like your tea bags. Yeah, he sounds well, like. Hey! <laughs> yeah. Is that not where you were going with it? No, listen, I'll go wherever you want. Okay. I don't care. It's what fine. What did I say? Life's uh -oh. when you're European. You like that? I do like that, yeah. <laughs> well, I am you're European. You're a bit European, aren't you? I understood that. Aye. Yeah. First thing you want to let's get about no, I didn't understand. No, okay. I, uh, have you ever been to Scotland? Yes, I have. Do you play golf? I uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> you know you should. Just to piss them off when they see you walk on the golf course, they'd be no, like, no, no. "Oh no!" Nope. You're like, "Yeah." I do, and I did with my dad, but uh, but and I loved it because it's a quiet moment on the green. It's you and the balls, and kind of like the business. <laughs> Fortunately, I still have my two. Yeah. <laughs> I've only got the one left, but oh, it was a rough God. 80s for me. Right? Well, Yo. you're, you're in television. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, no, they take them all in television. I can't do anything here now. I'm, <laughs> my hands are tied. The only thing I can do is walk up and down with a horse and a couple of ladies oh. dressed as... You know, you do such a good job. I need to say that I, I'm doing this show because you're real. You're so real. Thanks, man. I, and, yeah. and I love you for that, and all of America loves you for that, because... Wow. You're... No, no, they do. Yeah. They do. You're beyond real. <laughs> you are. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's what I didn't say. Beyond real. Beyond real, yeah. <laughs> Surreal, in fact. Uh, Listen, tell me about, see, in the American Idol, when the kids get there, and, you know, people are always kind of, uh, they criticize that when, you know, dreams are crushed by these young singers. But that happens all the time in the music business anyway, doesn't it? It does. You know, I didn't want to take Idol because I thought that to be a star, you had to play the clubs. And you had to fail in the clubs. You had to fall down and get booed off the stage to really get that, get that inner crust of, of who you think you are. But these kids, like Jessica, she's 16. Where does she get that voice from? Yeah. And, and a lot of the kids that we see, there's where I, I turn my head around. They really can sing. So that just because they don't play all the clubs, they're going to yeah. be put through the coals of time just getting to the, the top 10. Yeah, I, mean, I think that, I think that, but you know what I think? I think there's also, there, like, people can have talent, mm -hmm. but I think in the business that you're in, and yeah. the business, I think that talent's just where you start. It's just like having your driver's license. It's yeah. like, yeah, you're going to need that. Mm -hmm. Now, are you going to be able to survive, and, mm -hmm. you know, do you have the skill and the ability to negotiate the utter... Ay, caramba! ...who are involved behind the scenes? That's right. That's right. <laughs> exactly. 
I mean, mean that that's the problem. Real? Oh God. Do you, do you think you became something of? I mean, because you had quite a you know a spectacular and a flamboyant and have uh, still got a spectacular and flamboyant career. Do you think you became a businessman through all of that? Well, somewhere around 88, I got sober the first time, and Joe and I made a, made a pact to, to start carrying the, the valises. You know, in other words, yeah. hang out with the lawyers, find out what the business is, because up until then, <clears throat> it was, you got a great deal with this and a great deal with that. Money managers, business managers, they try to take you down. And it's interesting, because you don't know they are until you look. Yeah. And we I would know. never have seen it until we got sober. Because they're always friendly. I, they're always like, hey, you look great, buddy. Yeah. And then... Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. You, you don't know if they're trying to work you to keep your high so you're not looking or what but as soon as we looked and so right now you know it's a new like for instance the last nine years was was a bit of a trudge for yeah. me my, my parents both my parents passed away and yeah, the kids left for school yeah. and the dogs passed and all these great excuses for me using again yeah which is my fault I did yeah. but you know it caused great rifts great hatred in fact hot heaping helpings of hate amongst me and one said Joe Perry yeah but through all that we just finished an album with Jack Douglas it's beyond my wildest expectations. That's fantastic. Aerosmith is back. That's great. It's, I mean, he plays his ass off. Tom, Joey, and Brad play so good. Everybody's when is the sober album again. When so, is the on. album? When is the album ready? Uh, it comes out September. Well, well, you know what? We got a new studio. We ah. got a new studio opening up in, uh, in round about September. Yeah. Come and bring the band in. You play, got open up our new studio. We got a big you. place for a band yeah. to play. You yeah, can do yeah. it. That would be proper, like a band. We now you, and if you say it on TV, that means it's real, man. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, I just, I just suited you right there. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, we're a very old-fashioned band, and I may seem as the front guy, but it's we all. Yeah, you all one one I got to talk to those guys. Yeah, yeah, that's what I say when people say, "Hey, you got to come around and go. Got to talk to my wife." <laughs> That's right. Kind of the same thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit. It's like a marriage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know? I, I toured a little bit once with uh, the Rolling Stones. I was Ooh. writing a, a, a screenplay for Mick Jagger. Ah. And so I had to tour around with them a little bit. Yeah. And I was amazed how much of like a band they still were. Mm -hmm. Like you guys, I guess, are still the same. It's like you all still kind of little arguments, little. You know, it's oh, like yeah. little spinal tap yeah. going on yeah, all the yeah, time. Yeah. They know when we're doing something. Yeah. Each, each one of us knows when the other ones bring up a past behavior that's like, so we laugh at it now. Yeah. But, you know, um, um, the sad truth is, is when you're high, you don't laugh at it. There's no humor. Yeah. Like they were looking for another lead singer, and I actually took it personal because I was high. Yeah. And I, now... I, no, I, 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 I don't know, it's, Stephen. I think Aerosmith was a different lead singer. I think you're allowed to take that personally. Yeah, okay, right? so all right. <laughs> Yeah. No, 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 no. It was really, a totally you know, unreasonable position to take. Uh, you know, so, but, but, it, but it's those real things that most people don't know about. We just did 60 Minutes. Yeah. I wrote a book. I mean, if you read it, you'll know what's really goes on. But that's really what it takes to, to you you know, know, for I pressure. Re for, I read your book. Oh. I read, because uh -oh. my editor, the guy <laughs> edited my uh, memoir, yeah. edited yours. Yikes. And he sent, he said, like, I was writing mine, and he said, yours is boring. I've got the, <laughs> he said, I've got the first 10 pages of Tyler's autobiography. Ooh. I went, let me see it. So he let me see it. So you can't let anybody, uh, let, let, you know, you can't tell anybody, so I'm not telling anybody, mm -hmm. but he let me see it. Yeah. And he, it was talking about the girl up, upside down in the shower with oh. the shot glass. Oh, and my the, God. <laughs> well, God bless you, man. <laughs> Try to get to the other shore, you gotta lose sight of this one. Okay, and you're doing that real, real well. Thank you. Real well. Keep Thank taking you. chances and risks and doing what you're doing. Yes! Yeah, yeah. I know. The thing is, well, when you let it go, when you just let it go and go crazy. I love that. Now, I want, welcome back, everybody. I am. Um... <laughs> Let's talk about uh, Run DMC. Mm. You know, when you guys did that, mm. the uh, Walk This Way, that was at a time when I remember that most of the music community, and by that I mean white guys, mm. were not taking uh, hip-hop music seriously at all. Yeah, that was the beginning of it. Right. And we were on tour, and uh, I think we were just starting to come around. And, um, and uh, uh, the guys called us up and said, come on down and play, play along this track. Because uh, we scratched to it, and uh, you know we had heard what was going on, but we weren't really, really into it. And we came down. Rick Rubin is the one; he was responsible right. for that. 
And they started, uh, you know, rapping it and talking it, and they were using the record, and I said, no, no, let me sing that. And Joe grabbed the uh, guitar from one of the Beastie Boys who, God bless them, just lost their Yeah, it's terrible news, um, yeah. Um, but but it was magic, you know. That was such a magic moment because it they was. took that backstroke of love. I was out underneath the cover to talk to my daddy. You say because I was a drummer. Yeah. And I came from that rhythmic rhythmic, yah yah. Right. Uh, and, rhythmic yah yah. You yeah, see and, right there. <laughs> uh, so um, it was just magic. It, it's it it's, was, a, it's a it's a. I think it did so much uh, to open up. It's like when you talk about musicians loving music. Yeah. It's it's I've I've noticed that in the music community, real musicians yeah. don't care about genre at all, yeah. ever. Yeah. Like they always say, it's always interesting to watch you. They listen to a piece of music and go, oh yeah, that kind of. It's like when you see a real comedian, they're like, doesn't matter who, who the guy if he's 90 years old or if he's a kid, they go, yeah, good joke. Never laugh. Yeah. You know, they just go, yeah, good joke. That's a good joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's like uh, when you watch a musician, they don't kind of they kind of go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that works. Mm -hmm. Well, there's our own language, you know. Yeah. And for those of us that still write music, I'm sitting down at a hotel, you know, with two speakers, and I'm writing lyrics to these riffs that Joe Perry came up with, and the band wrote these these bodies and shells of songs, and I got to put myself into it. So, you know, four hours later, I'm sitting there, mm-hmm, yeah, all right. Not quite sure if it's good, but I just let it go. And I go into the studio with Jack. I say, give me a mic. I run in and sing it. I come back out and listen. I go, yeah, that's it. That's but, great. But, but what really is it, you know? It's, it's that magic moment. Yeah. And by the way, I'm sitting with uh, with with, uh, with um, John Lennon's son, um, or Julian Lennon. He's got a new record out right now too. And I just listened to that. And I got to tell you, for those of us that write our own stuff and have these words to say that don't doesn't matter, but it's what it is when it comes out, and that's it. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. It made me cry. It was just so beautiful. But that's that's where I'm at right now. I'm every night till four o'clock. You know. Uh, sitting down listening and writing these songs and we're at the very last one and we're mixing right now. I leave here and go and mix. We're at Swing House Studios yes, and it's I just, I mean, to be able to be in the goop of our creativity, yeah. it feels there's nothing like it on the planet. There's Whenever no high higher than, than coming up with something and writing, you know, with Joe and the guys yeah. and music and having it come out and listening to it. There's nothing higher than well, wait, to listen wait, no, no, wait, and to wait, have wait. you in a month from now be singing that chorus that I wasn't sure about. Yeah. Oh my God! You know what that must feel like? I can tell you what it feels like. <laughs> I know. I, I'm talking to myself, and <laughs> it's like it's beyond anything else. It's just what, what, is, what does it feel like, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> well, remember that girl in the shower or the? Ah, oh, yeah. Now I can relate. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's fantastic. I once heard a very wise man in a kind of club that I attend say to me, your talent is none of your business. You, 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 shouldn't, you shouldn't try and think about how good, bad, or indifferent you are. You just do it and then get out of the way. Yeah. Is that how you approach it, you think? You know, I've heard that. You know, what you think is none of my business. I was brought up Italian. It's impossible for me to think that. Yeah. I can't think that. Although I'm supposed to, therefore I won't be bummed out if you say, that looks stupid or sounds stupid or your band sucks. Well, that's because you're sensitive, mm. though. I mean, I can I tell am. from yeah. your, you know. Way. Your way. Way, you're, way. You're, no, you're very sensitive. I can see that. And I kind of like that about me. Yes, so. it's all right. It's kind of attractive. I, <laughs> I, I'm not gay, but I wouldn't do you. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. Yeah, it's just, it's just the way. I, and I look in the mirror before I come out, and I go, I do me. Yes. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the way you should feel. That's right. <laughs> we have to take one more break. We're right back with Steven Tyler. <laughs> Girl with the dragon tattoo. What are you doing? Are yeah, hey, who was up? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's all right. They're cool. I mean, if oh. you if you cuss, it'll be fine. Oh God! Look, the truth is, Stephen. Yeah. Many people in America know that you do cuss in your private life. Oh my God. <laughs> well, you know, I was just gonna say, I was gonna say, what is this in your? Oh, it's only water. That's, water. Uh, yeah. Don't it's... you know you shouldn't drink water? Fish. Crikey. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Not that water, they don't. All, All right. right. We're out of time. What would you like? Uh, mouth organ, oh. awkward pause, or the big cash prize? Let me just tell you, though. In the mouth organ, if normally if a guest can play the mouth organ, mm -hmm. they can win the golden mouth organ, which is actually a very, it's a real thing. Like, it's a real harmonica. <laughs>
like you could use it in your job. I could, is what I'm I saying. Could probably sing, use it tonight on a song. Y yeah. And we could have com complete the chain there. The circle right, so, of life, the and, wheel and of fortune, since, man. Since I'm a very oral guy, I will take the mouth organ. <laughs> we start with this. Oh. We start with this. I have to ask you, can you play? It's just I have to ask. Okay, can I, I can play. Okay. Well, let's go then. All right, here we go. All right. If you're any good, we'll bring out the golden mouth organ. All right, ready? You, yeah, okay. Who starts? Yeah, I'll start, and okay. then you, you pick it up, all right? Here we go. I got one better. Good night, John boy. Oh. See, he's actually pretty good. Stevie Wonder, eat your heart out. Yeah, that's right.